What's going on everybody? I just did something absolutely stupid. I recorded a six minute video and realized that my mic off. So in a nutshell, thank you for following. Thank you for staying true to the channel. Um, I did lose a sub. That's okay. I'm still at 65 strong. I appreciate every one of you guys. Um, two things if you want to follow my Twitter. It's on every video. You click the more under the title. It has my cash up there if you guys want to donate, which would mean everything don't feel obligated to do so but it is there basically it's there to make sure my son has food we can pay our rent our bills etc <clears throat> while the wife is out on paternity leave and while i'm out and i technically can't work <clears throat> due to the state giving us money but i'll tell you what the state here in washington state is it's it's crappy money dude <clears throat> it's barely enough to survive so um so if you want to don't feel obligated but like i said if you would like to the cash app is um my cash app is on there my twitter is on there as well if you want to follow i put call of duty things sports things um it's great it's a great little community for you guys to get to know me more um i'm gonna make this real real quick for those of you that haven't seen my last video there's only two views on it make sure you go and check that out um, there's something the there's something I have to say. Kind of explains the funk that I'm in right now. Um, but if you guys would like to watch that, comment on it. I still see your guys' comments. I still reply to them. <coughs> um, I'm here for you guys, but as well, I got to take care of my family and myself first. Um, <coughs> I will be keeping this channel up. I did decide that if I don't reach 100 subs by the end of this year, the last day of this year. I may temporarily, quote unquote, shut the channel down um, <clears throat> for a couple of months, just so I can really figure out, you know, what's what's the best for me at that specific time. You know, how am I utilizing my time <clears throat> for myself and for my family and for work? You know, you got to balance work life and home life. Um, so we'll go from there. But without further ado, it's been a while. It's been. Well, that, that last video I did doesn't even count. Um, let's see here. Let me check real quick. It's been three weeks <clears throat> since I last uploaded <laughs> a um, Seahawk video, which was Geno Stone joined Seattle via trade. Crazy. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I'm not going to commentate on this one. You know, I already know my allergies are getting crazy. Um, it's late at night. It's like almost one in the morning. But I'm pumping this out for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please stay safe. Take care of yourselves. See you in the next one, guys. Peace. could be a big one he's the nfl leader in touchdown receptions it's the seahawks and the cards and it's all just ahead on madden nfl 24. ea sports coverage of the nfl takes us to the valley of the sun at state farm stadium here in glendale it's all about divisional matchups on this final day Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, it's January 7th, but we haven't seen you since New Year's Eve, so we have to say Happy New Year, one and all. And partner, Happy New Year to you. This is it, the conclusion of the 2023 season. Hard to believe, but we got a good one here between division rivals. And you like what the NFL's done here, making Week 18 all division games. I think it's one of the more inspired moves by the league because they've made these matchups really count. And typically they mean something, not a lot of coasting as people head towards the playoffs. But I do have to ask, January 7th, is it too late to say it? We're kind of right on the borderline, aren't we, about Happy New Year? Because that always seems to be the subject of debate.
Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go. Sorry about that, guys. I was actually replying back to a fan, Fisher. He actually commented uh, four weeks ago, and I didn't even see it. So, sorry to you, Fisher, if you're watching these videos. <clears throat> I saw your comment. I did hard it. I did like it. And I did uh, respond. So, appreciate it. <clears throat> Two interceptions, one touchdown pass. That's not going to be good enough. Got to get that changed around. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And an early how do you do right there as they're going to bury him in the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. You talk about this Seahawk defense. They find themselves just a couple of spots outside of the top 10 defending the pass, number 12 in the league. And when you're getting ready to face the number one overall offense in the NFL, it does not matter where you rank defensively because you got your hands full. You don't know what you're going to face, but you know that it's a strong unit that you're getting ready for. A little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. That's their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And take it right on the 30. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. And he comes to the end of the season leading the NFL in passing yards. And that's not necessarily something you set out to do at the beginning of the year, but it's a good illustration of how remarkable and consistent he's been all season. They go play action here on first down. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. They'll run. It's Kenneth Walker. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. So, CD, here we are. You look at how well this offense has played all year. 16-0. Now, in most years, they'd be at home right now enjoying time off for their perfect season, getting ready for the postseason. But this is the decade of the 2020, so that means 17 games are what's needed to get through a perfect season. Would a win here make them an all-timer for you? It would. It absolutely would. And I realize we're not comparing apples to apples because of the length of regular seasons. But you think back to the 1972 Dolphins? They were 14-0 in the regular season. Three wins made them a Super Bowl champion, so they were 17-0 total. Imagine getting through 17 now and then continuing on and winning the Super Bowl. They're an all-timer team already for me. Walker now in first and 10. Shreds him with a stiff arm. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 15. First down, Seahawks. Last week, of course, the great performance. Over 200 yards. He still wants to be fed. And they should. That's exactly what you should do. I have not yet met a running back. This run for over 200 yards. It says the very next week it was back things up. Yeah, I don't need it as much. No, they want it more and more. They're going to be ready to go because they think that's going to happen naturally now. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Now back to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Williams. Short completion, just four yards, and it's second down. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run out. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Ken Walker with his 14th rushing touchdown of the year. And the Seahawks will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Extra point up and through by Myers. And that makes the score 7-0. And at the 
for the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And running with power here. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. Now this is just the last thing you want to see in the final week of the regular season. Well, I hope he's okay. We'll step aside and be right back. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started as we grind toward the end of the season here, and they haven't had the season that they had hoped. So let me ask you to play GM. Where might they look to make some changes? I think when you look into the upcoming draft, think hard about them drafting multiple offensive linemen. They've got to get stouter up front. And as a GM, it always tells me, Charles, this is a big boy league, and big people always end up winning games for you. From the 29, here's second and four. Here's Murray. Trying to fit it into Moore, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Devin Witherspoon. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. So problems with Aaron passing continuing. Remember, he threw two picks in the loss last week, and now another here in this first quarter. And sometimes, partner, this is the result of a quarterback who's simply trying to do too much. Feels like he's trying to make up for what he did last week, and he can't do it all on one throw. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Up the middle they run, it's Walker. And he can't quite get there, tackled down at the one. 60 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Walker is in, touchdown Seattle. So he had the nice run to get him down there, was stopped just short of the goal line, but they go right back to him, CD, and he delivers to finish the drive off. A little extra determination there, don't you think, partner? You notice he didn't tap on his helmet and say, get me out after the run down to the end zone. He said, I almost got in. I'm going to get in on my own. I'm staying in, and he carries it across the goal line. For the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. So they've got the football and they'll start right on the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown, and now they lose the football. Yeah, partner, things are starting to unravel a little bit for them right in front of our eyes. They're going to be looking for some answers and quickly. Out of the gun, Walker with it. And they'll get to him just inside the 15. Even after the strong run we just saw, they're able to corral him quickly defensively. Here now, second and four. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Touchdown, Seahawks! DK Metcalf, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Myers connects on the PAT, and that makes the score 21 to zip. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores. And I know we're in the first half, but... The way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. If they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. Now second and nine. 
Out of the gun, here's Murray. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. And this passing game's whole offense really didn't show up in the loss last week, and it hasn't started all that great here either. Yeah, they can't let that incompletion become an uh-oh moment. Like, oh boy, here we go again, just like last week. Each game is its own entity, treated as such. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now Murray. And he is caught. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, these guys certainly need something good to go their way because this first quarter has been something of a disaster for them trying to move the ball. But that completion there, maybe can get them focused and moving in the right direction. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Throwing now is Murray. Escaping the pressure right. Murray fighting. Lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And now, meanwhile, after the dust settles on the fumble, we've got an injured player here as well. And this is certainly not what you want to see in the final week of the year. We'll be back. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. But Charles, they're really stringing these possessions and scores together early. We're still in the first quarter, but if they can score again here, a look out. Yeah, and as you taught me when we're broadcasting games, one word we're supposed to avoid, and that's blowout. But that's exactly what's going on here. Down three possessions just the first quarter. That goes beyond any worst-case scenario we might have thought coming into this game. And another touchdown here. That should eliminate any hopes for any type of a comeback. They'll look to throw now on first down. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. And this is what it's been like all game long. Guys running free in the middle of the field. This defense has just had no answer for this passing game. And that's another good hook up there. Football here to start quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. set up to throw oh into a sea of defenders have intercepted picked off by Jalen Mills and the cards will take over here at their own 12 yard line well, it's not the first time we've seen him give one up here during his rookie season and in this case zone coverage forced the mistake he's made some strides week to week and how he's handling the different type of coverages that he's seeing but clearly there's some growing still to do Cardinal offense coming back out. Let's give you a look at the playoff race now. This is end of the weekend in the NFC. Well, here we sit, week 17. Just one more week in the regular season after this one. So if you're one of these teams trying to make a move and improve your spot or jump in from the outside, Charles, you better make that move now. And these final games are often a good barometer for all those teams fighting for position or a wild card spot. They have to be able to get the job done these last two weeks before things get even tougher when the playoffs officially begin. To begin the drive, here's a handoff to Hunt. And strong running there gets this up over the 15-yard line. Tackled that time by Derek Hall. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. 
ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second down and six now. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Able to get this one to McBride. So give him two yards there on the completion. And now we've got a third and four. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Third and four. Looking to throw, Toon. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm, trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. It's a 44-yard punt, just three on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 38. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And out route, and he's got the connection to Walker. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Two yards to go, second down. They'll look to throw. Flush to his right, and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. On play action, they'll throw. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Noah Fant. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Seahawks are able to add on to their first half lead. Charles, every time that he makes one of these plays, I, I think the front office, they get a bigger and bigger collective smile because they feel more confident that they have found their guy, their future at quarterback. And they should feel that way. It's obvious he's a big part of why they have such a good record this season. You're right about the bright future as well. And by association, a bright future for the franchise, too. And not willing to risk another fumble. He'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, it told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Two. That's into the hands of Pascal. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Toon going to throw it. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Now it's second and ten. A give right side now to Hunt. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Devin Witherspoon. And the Cardinals are going to get it back here just past the 35. 
Wow, so wipe out the INT roughing the passer. What a disaster. An absolute disaster, and you hope their lockers are not right next to each other <laughs> for the post game. Safe to say one is not buying the other dinner. Throwing two. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Hassan Reddick coming in for that outside linebacker spot, and he buries him for a loss of seven. I don't care if you're taking it in round one, you're undrafted, whatever. As a rookie quarterback in this league, you're going to have games where you face adversity like this. Lessons. All the time you're going to face these lessons. The key for this guy is, will he be able to bounce back in the next one? Because right now, this has not been his game. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. This is Hunt on the draw play. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Stopped in his tracks and given a loss on that play by Patrick Queen. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Here's two. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. And Toon to throw it now. And this is going to be incomplete. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds, and now fourth down. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. And the 39-year-old veteran puts it right through, and that drops a deficit from 28 to 25. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you get the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. And a nice return sets them up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Seahawks going to take over now late in this first half. And with a huge lead already, they may be thinking, hey, our job's complete for these first two quarters. Let's get this to the locker room. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. come out throwing here to start the drive and a dangerous throw there incomplete he threw that into coverage it was nearly intercepted these two teams they met up in Seattle earlier in the year with the Seahawks coming away victorious so a win here in Arizona would give them the season sweep he'll try again with the arm here on second down oh he tries to force it in and it's intercepted and he'll take this back down inside the 20. A tough adjustment to the NFL throughout his rookie season. And his proper turnovers is exacerbated by his early showing today. That's a comfort for him here in this first half. 
and still the double digit mark for the entire season. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And they've got a good chance of getting points out of this. They start in the red zone on first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Here's Toon to throw it. And he's wrapped up. Taken down. Back in the 25. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Now Toon. And that one too wide. And incomplete. What a sequence there defensively. You get the sack to move him to third and long. Then here, just nothing available. And he's got to throw it away. The chance of wasting this great starting field position. A real threat. This is third and long. They'll set up a throw. Looking sideline, and he's going to have his man as he was able to walk the tightrope there for the completion. It'll be a pickup of 14, but they're still a little bit short as it brings up fourth. And that big gain may just change the thought process here on fourth down. I think in the red zone, they might. And I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, the play, that's pretty tight. Now well, here's the call. Fourth down, Murray off, Matt and the Cards field goal unit and Matt Prater out there now. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. Prater's kick is good, and they're back within three scores as it's now a 22-point game. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And with seven seconds remaining, not much time to really do anything. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. They'll throw now on the final play. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we reach halftime. Only two quarters of football left in the regular season. Everybody's excited to get to the playoffs. So excited that we're just going to skip right over halftime and get back to the action. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. The Seahawks offense set to go to begin this third quarter. try and start this drive in the air it's Williams on the catch and they're able to get this one across the 35 just his second catch of the game so far this one moves the chains and while we may be looking at the scoreboard this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down even with a three score lead here in the third quarter I think they keep taking their shots 
They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. But that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Over 30 yards there. And first downs on three consecutive plays now. Already over 1,000 yards receiving this season. That catch is just going to add to his total. Certainly not resting on his laurels. He's trying to continue to gain as many yards as possible and continue this big season. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Back to throw again. It's complete to Williams. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Here is third down and four. throw again pass taken in by his big tight end and the Seahawks are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points and in a lot of ways that catch is expected red zone presence and that one was realized there you've got to find your tight end in that situation again he'll drop to throw and it's caught Touchdown, Kenneth Walker with touchdown number three here in this game and 17 now on the year. And the Seahawks take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. And three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And not willing to risk another fumble. He'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. A CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. And that's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. It'll be a gain of about five, but they're left with a third and still about 12 to go. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Third and 12. Omaha, 
Murray now. And that is incomplete. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter. And they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Good drive last time, really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, well, I'm, well, I wouldn't change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. 95 yards rushing for him in this one as he starts to draw nearer to a 1,500-yard campaign. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I loved one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. And he'll get it across midfield and down to the Cardinal territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. He'll look to throw. Steps away to his left. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Hadn't met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder if he wasn't a first-round pick. They want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there, no hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried running through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. That's to the tight end, Colby Parkinson. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. They go play action here on first down. And this is incomplete. Oh, he had six points right in his hands, but could not hang on. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Here's second and ten. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Maurice Hurst, coming right up the gut, gets in there for a loss of nine. All right, let's give them a little bit of applause here. Good for them, because this has been a defensive nightmare for them thus far. At least they're finally getting a couple of big plays. Won't make the scoreboard of the ride home easier, but one good moment to watch in film next week. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will be taken down with a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Now a play fake here on first down. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Seahawks look poised to reach 17-0 as they add on to their lead. 
we saw so much of this last year at the college level, but there you go, his first rushing touchdown as an NFL quarterback. And with the speed he has, we certainly know it won't be his last because that's something that aided him very well, as you mentioned, at the college level. It's something he's going to carry over, and they'll make it a big part of their offense. Extra point up and through by Myers. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. Jason Myers to kick off for Seattle. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And this take it in at the goal line. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And what a return. Great field position all the way out to the 48 there. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Facing a big fourth quarter deficit here. Things not looking good. You know, this offense, though, they've been in the top half of the NFL so far this season. But in this one, well, their defense has really struggled. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. There's Murray. Swings this out for Hunt. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Murray now to throw. That pass completed to Dorch. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. Boy, week 18, this is just when you hope everybody can get through the regular season healthy. But the medical staff is going to have to take a look here. And we'll step aside. Murray's throw completed to Brown. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Second down, Murray sets to throw. His pass caught at the four. And the Cardinals are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. But well, they can put him in a number of different places, in line, H-back, put him in the slot. In this case, they put him out wide. Matchup nightmare. Who are you going to send out to cover him? And he picks up a first down with that catch. Dancing to his left. And he'll take this one in for the Arizona touchdown. Kyler Murray taking it in from four yards out. And the Cardinals are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. What an effort there. Sometimes you hold your breath a bit when you see your quarterback diving for the end zone. You don't want him to land on a shoulder wrong or take a big shot. But he looks none the worse for wear here. And that winds up a touchdown. Now Matt Prater for the point after. And they make the score a little bit more respectable here in our final quarter of play. So the drive there took six plays. And the play that polished it off was the touchdown run by Kyler Murray. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker in the Seattle offense. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine.
the play fake. He'll look to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. It'll go as a loss of three on the sack, and it brings up third down. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't. And a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to have to put a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And they have been unstoppable this afternoon, Charles. They just went after them from the start and pass plays like we just saw. They're continuing their dominance here despite the big lead in the fourth quarter. And that they have in every way. And plays like that across all phases of the game, they've just been effortless for them in this one. And that's what's helped them build such a large lead and allowed them to smile as this game continues. A gear for Walker running right. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Now, this is just the last thing you want to see in the final week of the regular season. Well, I hope he's okay. We'll step aside and be right back. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Four yards to pick up, first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they're powering through, and they're controlling this game. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. He'll look to throw. A short throw here to Latu. And that's good for a gain of six. And it's second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. He'll drop to throw. And this pass broken up. But the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Back to throw, and it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Seahawks go for it, but can't convert. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. So they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth, but they didn't get it. Guaranteed, it's not going to be a fun handshake in the postgame, right? <laughs> you just know that there's going to be some bad blood there. And I know if we go to the postgame press conferences, the, the winning coach, you know what he's going to say? Why he did it? We need the points. Toward the sideline, intercepted. I'm not sure, Brandon, we've seen a sloppier played game this year for a team on offense. Turn it over four times and expect to win? No chance whatsoever. And look, I have no idea what the ratio is about turning over four times and how that correlates to winning or losing. But I guarantee you, it's not very good. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they just continue to roll right along, really. This has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four. Now it looks like he'll throw here. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. He'll get five out of the scramble and hit second down. Up the middle, here's Walker. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. 
They'll try for the first with Walker. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Now, Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but, boy, their offense was on fire in this ballgame. And, hey, partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into this offense? They certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. For those of you that stayed to the end of the video, I appreciate you. We're going to do this real quick. I only got three minutes to wrap up this video before it um, shuts off. <laughs> so, Buffalo number one, Kansas City number two, got Jags at three, Bengals at four, all the other teams, eh, they're, they're all right. We got the Falcons at the number two seed. For once, the Cowboys are not in the NFC playoff picture at all. Uh, but we do have San Fran, we got the Eagles in there, the Giants. Packers and Panthers. <clears throat> that is crazy to see. Um, <clears throat> go news. Anything here? No. All right, this is what we've all been waiting for. <clears throat> JJ McCarthy hits the number one in passing leaders with 4,500 yards, 58 touchdowns. We didn't make the rushing leaders. That's fine. But receiving was DK Metcalf and Jackson Smith and the Jigba. Both wide receivers reaching 2,000 yards and over 25 touchdowns. Devin Witherspoon came in first place tied with Marshawn Lattimore for eight interceptions. <clears throat> and other than that, not too bad for his season, right? So, um, <clears throat> obviously, we're going to look at the playoff bracket here. We do have the number one seed. <clears throat> So let's quickly go to advance. Got like a minute and a half. <clears throat> let's check out the picture here. So uh, it looks like we're going to be playing the Eagles. New York versus Green Bay. I'm going to say Green Bay comes out on top. Obviously, we're coming out on top. I'm going to say the Ravens take on the Bills. And I'm going to say Kansas City goes and beats the Jets. <clears throat> We're going to upgrade our players real quick. <clears throat> Go from there. <clears throat> Anything else? Yeah, we have the best record, but look at that 14 and 3, 14 and 3, 15 and 2. Crazy teams right now. Anyways, guys, we're in the playoffs, doing the divisional, then the conference, and then the Super Bowl. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.